Moody family visiting with us this morning. You're our special guests. I'd like to say welcome to our Facebook audience. Matthew chapter 10, and uh, let me say for those of you that are on visitation, we're so grateful you were able to come and uh, be a part of that. Uh, and uh, somebody said, Preacher, how many went out? Well, we, well I, think, I think it was about 110 homes. I've, I've got a couple different counts. Uh, but we uh, loaded the doors with uh, the gospel, amen, amen. and uh, spread some word about the children's ministry. Uh, the, the bus route, you said, Preacher, we don't even have a van yet. I know. Uh, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. Uh, God will provide a way. When God's, when God's got your heart and he's got my heart, he'll make, he'll make a way. Amen? Uh, but uh, we were, were able to do that, and, and we had plenty of people working. Uh, somebody said, well, preacher, I, I, I can't get around too good. I can't walk too good, but I'd really like to be a part. Or, or even this, I, I don't know that right now I'm prepared to be able to talk to somebody about the gospel. That's okay. Hey, when I got saved, I didn't start spreading the gospel the next day. It took me a little while. There's something for you to do. We had a wonderful breakfast. Somebody told me one of our men said uh, he'd make somebody a good wife he cooked so good. Amen. Uh, but did, uh, had a wonderful time. We met here. We're going to do this every other Saturday. Uh, if you aim at nothing, you hit nothing. Amen. Uh, we're aiming uh, to reach the homes through the children and try to see men and women saved in this area. Uh, as we were preaching and reading uh, and studying for the message this morning, God's parked me in this passage. Now, this is a difficult text, and uh, I'm not going to get into all the deep theology. I'm going to bring a practical thought from it. Uh, but at the meantime, there'll be a few things that we'll look at that I think the Lord will stir our hearts and help us. Matthew chapter 10, if you would. Uh, the reading will be lengthy. We'll start in verse 1. And when he had called him... His twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now look, I don't care really what you and I believe. The Bible says he gave his disciples power to heal unclean spirits. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. Uh, how do you interpret that preacher? Christ right here called the twelve and he gave them power to heal unclean spirits. Now does he do that today? Uh, I'll talk more about that later, amen. But right here, he gave them power to go out and to heal unclean spirits. Let's keep our reading on. Uh, and unclean spirits to cast uh, them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Uh, now the names of the 12 apostles are these. I want to pause right there just for a second. You know he said 12 apostles. He's going to name them. There's a qualification of being an apostle. You've had to have been able to see the resurrected Christ. These men saw the resurrected Christ. So if you turn your TV on today and somebody comes out and calls themselves apostle so-and-so, they are lying to you. They're not telling the truth unless they have physical evidence that they saw the resurrected Christ. That was the qualifications of being an apostle. These men saw the Lord after his resurrection. Amen? That's a qualification. I want to make that uh, uh, clear that thought up there. Now let's keep our reading going. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, uh, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into the uh, city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but uh, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, <coughs> nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. <coughs> and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, 
inquire who is worthy, and there abide uh, ye uh, go hence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of the house or the city, shake off the dust from your feet. Verse 15 is a key verse. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. I want to preach to you this morning on the thought, spiritual opportunities provided. Spiritual opportunities provided. Father, we love you today. Thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you for these that have come to hear the Bible. Lord, uh, we pray that you would embed us, uh, help us to develop these thoughts that you've shared with us, Lord. And uh, we would preach with clarity and power. I pray for our community, Lord, where you've sent us out door by door. We pray for the young children, Lord, we're trying to reach. We're asking you to provide a van for us, Lord, where we can start our bus route. We've already got men and women that stepped up to serve you in this matter. We need you to provide for us. And so we're pleading and asking. You said we have not because we ask not. Uh, Lord, you said, ask and, it sh and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Uh, you also remind us through the, uh, the letter of the Apostle Paul, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. We're providing you, God, an opportunity to show yourself strong on our behalf. And Lord, meet our needs. Bless the word of God this morning, and I promise you we'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's a rare, a rare text. Uh, the Lord Jesus has already got those that will be preaching to the Gentile nation. But the lost sheep of the house of Israel are a special people to him. Now look. Uh, they are. They should have gotten saved, amen. They should have got right with God. The Bible says uh, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But to his men as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So the Lord came to the nation of Israel and I personally am under persuasion if, if they would have accepted the message, uh, the, the specific message that Christ told his apostles to preach, which was what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, the Messiah that we've been praying about, the one we've been told about, the one we've been looking for, he is here, friend. He is here. He is on the scene. And even John, the message was sent to John the Baptist. Do the blinded eyes. Have they opened the blinded eyes? Do the death here? Are the dead raised? And so the Lord clarified uh, the, the proof and the evidence that he, he was who he said he was. Uh, and so many should have already not only accepted him, but submitted to the message, the specific message that the disciples, the apostles rather, had been sent out. He said, I want you to go into these cities and there I want you to tell them uh, the Lord's come. He's here. Uh, make you a straight way for the Lord. He's on the scene. And so these apostles had a specific message. Well, there's a difference between them and you. We have, don't you misunderstand me, the word of God from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. And as I've challenged you many times and challenged you on Facebook, somebody said, well, well, that, that book's got mistakes in it. I promise you this. You show me one mistake in the King James Bible and I will publicly eat the page. It is not here, friend. There's no mistakes in it. We do not have a need for another version or one that can be easier uh, understood. You say, why do you say that, preacher? How many of you believe in the Holy Spirit of God? When I got saved and you got saved, if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit of God, the Bible refers to him as the paraclete. He came into my heart and he came into your heart and he doesn't need nobody transforming, if you will, translating a Bible to help him, help his people understand the word of God, friend. It's been around for ages any revival that you study, any great move of God came from the King James Bible. Study it, friend. Study it. Don't, don't walk out of here mad at me. And just because of ignorance, I'm telling you, go back and study it. 
God uses the King James Bible. Now, is that all God uses? No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that at all. God can use whatever he wants to. But I'm telling you right now for the English speaking people, friend, God has used this book over and over and over again. And that same power as far as the word of God that those apostles had, friend, you and I have it. Now, why did Jesus allow them or give them the power to raise the dead or to cast out the, uh, the spirits. Why did he do it? Well, when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. He's referring to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He's referring to the word of God. Now many people say this. Uh, he's talking about speaking in tongues. You said, boy, you're going to cover a lot here today. Let me just tell you this. If you, I challenge anybody in this building, you take Acts chapter 1 through 3, and you, and, and you take 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and all this hogwash, shit about a Hyundai, and see me tie my tie, and all this, none of it is of God. The Bible said there is none without signification. There's no languages that God uses that man cannot understand. Now, God can impress his, his message to people. God can speak to his people, but God uses the King James Bible and the English language. And so, before the Bible, the King of the word of God was completed, God allowed, if you got a problem with it, take it up with the Lord, God allowed men to preach, and when they preached, they was, they was a mixed audience, friend, several different languages, and God miraculously allowed these men to preach in one language, and everyone heard him speak in his own language. Look at the Bible. It's in the word of God, friend. We've got a crowd today that's taking this thing way out of bounds. And it's built, and the churches, listen, this is why the church is falling apart. It's built on a bunch of emotionalism. I, I've, I know men that are, that, that, that have preached that all sin comes from Satan. And if you die, if you die and you get sick, you're filled with sin. Hey, friend, show me that in the Bible, man. What are you going to do with Lazarus? This sickness is not unto death. It's under the glorification of the Son of God. And by the way, this Pentecostal crowd, that preaches all the healing and all this. Why are there people dying off by masses? If they've got the power of God to keep them and heal them, why don't they lay hands on them? I got another thing out here. Why, do, why did this fella come out? Who, somebody help me with his name. Benny Hinn come out and totally renounced all of his Pentecostal doctrine. You know why? Because he had been abusing the scriptures. And for all these men that, that claim publicly on Facebook, I'm telling you, I'll do it. If you can heal the sick, if you can raise the dead, I'll buy you a plane ticket to fly down to, down to these children's hospital to St. Jude and lay your hands on these sick children. Wonder how many phone calls I'm gonna get. You know why I won't get one? They don't have the goods, brother. These men right here, these apostles, exactly what God said is what they did. They went out and they healed the blind, they raised the dead, and they healed the diseases. God gave these men that kind of power. God has not given you and I that kind of power. Now watch it. Don't misunderstand me. God can still do it. I believe he does heal the sick. I believe he does cleanse, the, cleanse people from bad spirits. But I'll tell you what, friend. He does, it, he does it in according to this book. God's not going to do something that is not accurately lined up with this Bible. When you leave the 66 canons, uh, books of this Bible, friend, you've went into a, to a, the realm of man and you've left the authority in the realm of God. Why is it they're not quoting a bunch of Bible when they're doing all this stuff? I'll tell you why they don't have the goods. But here... That's not my message this morning. This passage can be a very, if you would, uh, serious passage. It, Jesus is speaking about judgment coming to these cities. And what I want to focus on is this. The Lord sent these men out, and he said it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, these people that were in these communities, can you imagine this? Think about this for a moment. The apostle Peter walked in their neighborhood and raised the dead. He walked in their neighborhood and he healed the sick. 
I mean, God sent a powerful testimony in these neighborhoods. And he went to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, a special people. God had a testimony through the lives of these men. He said, while you're going down there, I want you to preach a specific message to this crowd right now. And the message was, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, to the Jewish people, if you'll receive the Lord Jesus as the Messiah, he, he probably would have set his kingdom up if they would have done it, but they rejected him. So the message there was a specific message. Now here's what we have in common with these apostles. God has placed authority, listen to me, not on the lodge, but on the church, friend. He's placed it on the church. God didn't ordain the lodge, he ordained the church. God uses the church. Amen? He doesn't use all this other private stuff. By the way, somebody asked me about the lodge the other day, and I, I, I just quoted out of Duncan's Book of Masonry. I quoted to him. You know what I did? Anytime a man has to publicly and make a promise publicly that he'll not knowingly sleep with another Mason's wife, that's wicked, friend. And I said it on Facebook, and I will not retract it. Amen. God uses the church. It's the church Christ died for. Christ saves men and women through the church. These rascals get upset with me, but they won't, they, won't, they won't answer the Bible. God didn't ordain Duncan's book of masonry. He ordained the word of God. The power's in the Bible. Well, do we need to do both? No, we don't. There's one, friend. God give the authority here. Here's the authority right here. Nowhere else. It's not in man, it's not in me, it's in the Lord Jesus. Now here's what I want you to see. Jesus said it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah. What does he mean? Here's what he means. Those men that walked in those neighborhood, they gave opportunity that men and women will never see again for people to be saved and believe in the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you, can you imagine the Apostle Peter coming and healing somebody and by the way giving testimony in his message that he had walked on the water? Peter treaded water. Peter walked on the water, friend. The book of Acts says Peter raised somebody from the dead. Hey, Peter was in jail and the Holy Spirit of God broke him out of jail, friend. I mean, according to the answer of the prayers of God's people, he had a powerful testimony. A powerful testimony. And so these people in that area, friend, they just didn't hear no preaching. They heard some of the greatest preachers God's ever called into the ministry. Peter, James, and John, Bartholomew, uh, the sons of Zebedee, Matthew, the publican. I mean, he names them here. These men, friend, walked with God immensely. And when they preached, God did things. That's what's missing in our pulpit today. We got a lot of watered down preaching. We got a lot of just coming up and just tell everybody, hey, God didn't call me to tickle your ears. God called me to give you and I the word of God. There's none here that's righteous no not one from the pulpit to the back pew and the problem today in the church is nobody has enough courage very few have enough courage to stand up love God's people and tell them the truth if you're a part of a church that they don't tell you the truth they do not love you if a man loves you he'll tell you the truth amen well Jesus sent these men to this community, the lost house of the sheep of Israel. Now, my time's going to run out, and I, and I, I believe we ought to be able to say what we've got to say. Just like Jesus told Judas, what thou doest, do quickly. I believe you can preach within 20 or 30 minutes, amen. I don't want to hear somebody heart for 45, 50 minutes my, and never say nothing, amen. So we ought to confine our message. Uh, Brother Cole, we, we took part in his funeral Thursday, and he'd tell me, you need to learn to shoot a bullet, not buckshot. <laughs> Amen. A bullet, has, a bullet has a lethal punch. Buckshot scattered. A bullet has an aim. And so here's what I'm trying to say is this. God ordained these men, sent them out into a certain community, gave them power. Now look, one thing he did here is this, uh, and this is for some of you that are probably, you've already given, you've given all you can. Uh, we're going to take up another love offering for the van, but you're, you're saying, oh God, 
please provide this van. Uh, Jesus provided what I want to call supernatural provision. He told these fellas, he said, don't you worry about no gold. Don't you worry about no silver. Don't worry about no brass. I'm going to take care of it. Amen. And did you know what? God don't need you and I to, to, to be worried about what he's going to do. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And I promise you one thing, friend. If God's got a man's heart, he's got his wallet. Amen. And, and, and God doesn't waste his time. Look, if you don't invest, I can tell you right now where your treasure is. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. If you show me your, you show me your pocketbook and your checkbook, and I'll tell you what you love. That's painful, isn't it? It's the truth. What are we doing for heaven? What are we investing in heaven? Now I'm going to get you to my message. Did you know what? This community out here, we were out here yesterday walking through this community. This community, even like the lost house of the nation of Israel, is special to Christ. Now let me tell you what Jesus is telling these people. He's telling this. When the day of judgment comes... It's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah because of the witnesses that you had. Peter, James, John, Thaddeus, the son of the sons of Zebedee. These men came and they preached. They did miracles uh, through me, and you knew the message was true. They were a person who provided. They provided many spiritual opportunities. These apostles did. God ordained them, and God sent them out. And when they went out, there were many spiritual opportunities provided through these apostles. And that's why he's saying this. When the day of judgment comes, it's going to be tough on these people because they had a major witness in their lives. Now you say, preacher, where are you going with this thing? Right here. I wonder how tolerable it's going to be for this community we're responsible for. I'm just asking a question. How much have they heard? How much have they seen? What have we done? What are we doing? You say, preacher, we just all started going out on visitation. You getting on us? No, I'm not getting on you. I'm trying to get you to see the light. Let me tell you something, friend. Yesterday, and I'm primarily on Facebook. I'm preaching to our church today. If this convicts you and you're watching by Facebook, then you probably need to get off your blessed assurance and get on your feet and, and get out and spread the gospel. Amen. Our people, we have a little bit, we don't have many people. I think yesterday I counted nine people. Was that correct? Nine people did the breakfast, did the, did the, uh, the visitation. Now I want to go back two weeks before. Couple, was it two weeks before or three? Three weeks before. We had 12 people. They come up here. So everybody can't go out here in this heat and walk. No way I'd expect any elderly person or anyone suffering with any kind of physical ailment to go out here in this heat and walk. So you, let me get that straight. But there are, God don't expect you to sit down and do nothing, though. There's things you can do. Just a couple of weeks before that, Brother Mark, we met up here, and I think there was 12 of us, and it took us. We ate breakfast packed the envelopes, and it was less than two hours. I know it's probably an hour and a half, I believe. An hour and a half done something for God. Because of that Saturday, those that sit around those tables and packed those uh, door hangers, yesterday uh, I was, and I learned something yesterday. They said, we're going to hit 100 homes, preacher. And I thought, oh, boy. We're going to be out here all day. I'm fat. It's hot. I don't want to walk. And my legs are killing me today. I walked uphill. I said, glory to God. I passed that last one out, Mark. And here she comes. She felt sorry for me. She done walked way up and got the car and come down and picked me up. 27 minutes. We covered 110 homes. Wow. 110 people. Now, some of them may throw it away. But 110 homes we covered. All I asked them to do, I didn't ask nobody to talk to nobody about Jesus. If you want to do that, that's fine. Bless your heart, you need to. I didn't ask nobody to talk to nobody. Brother Mark, you know all I asked them to do? Take a little hanger, 
Put it on the door. Don't put it on the mailbox, federal fence. Put it on the door and walk away. If somebody says hello to you, speak to them. And you know why I asked them that, Brother Burrow? Right now, if Christ was to return, I wonder how tolerable it's going to be for this community based on what our church has done. That's my message. It's convicting, isn't it? Here's where I'm going at. Look, some of you can't physically do much. I know that. God knows that. We're going to be having an offering coming up a couple weeks from now. And every bit of it, 100% of it's going to this van. Let me tell you what we're going to do with that van. We're going out in this seat. We've already started. I'm doing this by faith. We've already started hanging out flyers that says Children's Church and Van Route. We've already did it. They're on the doors. And I want to load them van down with kids. Children, the little children. So listen, it's scriptural. Suffer the little children to come unto me. For such as the, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. I want to reach these kids right now. We only have two. We got two. I think today two is what we got. We got two over there. We didn't have none here a while back. We got two. God turned the world upside down with 12. And I'm pleading with the Lord. I want to send a testimony in this community that this church loves children and loves people. We don't have to go out here. I don't want to beat them with the gospel. I didn't say go out here and beat them over the head with the gospel and tell them all our doctrine. That's, that's not what our goal is. I want to invite them, let them know that they're, well, they ain't, their mom and daddy ain't coming. They're just going to bring the children. That's all right. We'll take all of them they got. We'll take them all. Start loading them down in the fellowship hollow. Well, we can hear them while you're preaching. That's what I want. That's why I got them over there. I want you to hear them. I got them over there where you can hear them. I want you to hear them. I'm missing a little fingerprints. I don't see no dirty fingerprints. Hey, look, we're, we're losing the battle. If we don't get off these pews and get out there and try to get them saved, they're going to die without Christ. Preacher, I can't. My time's passed. There's not much I can do. Yeah, you can. You can pray. If you can cook, you can be here. You can pray. You can call. You can fold. You can fold uh, brochures and put them in the door. And let us young bucks go out here and do it. 27 minutes, 110 homes, Brother Greg. I timed it. What's going to happen if you got 12 people? We didn't have a few yesterday. You got 10 or 12 more people doing that and hitting this community. And you say, Preacher, well, we do that. Well, what are you doing? We don't see nothing. Okay, I'm, I'm living my life before the Lord Jesus, friend. I, I laid down my head yesterday and I slept. I talked to two, two Mexican girls and I'm praying they'll come. You say, what are they going to do? You get Mexicans and black people. We're going to love them. Love them with the word of God. God's not a respecter of person, friend. That's a problem in this country today, one of them. We're going to love them and try to reach them with the word of God. These children, many children right now, friend, while you're in church and I'm in church, they're not in church. They've been in a home where alcohol has been abused and drugs have been abused, many of them. Many of them are in broken homes. They don't have the luxuries that some of our children have. They don't know the Lord. They need the Lord. The songwriter said, people need the Lord. And you know what? I'm not worried about what no other church is doing. Praise the Lord. If they're trying to reach people, I'm all for them. Let them reach them. But right here is who I'm worried about. 
we are responsible to provide a spiritual opportunity for these people that are in this community. Now, we can't make them do what's right. But, friend, we can go out here and saturate these communities with literature from this church, be willing to provide a way to haul their children in the house of God and do everything we can do to see people being saved. This is what's missing in the church, friend. We've got a mentality of men that have the philosophy of praying them up. Well, let me tell you something. You show me in the Word of God where Jesus said, pray to people in, I'll eat the page. You know what he said? He said, go out into the highways and the hedges. Acts chapter 20, the Word of God says they went door to door. It's still, oh, that's old, friend. That's when it, that's old, old timers did that. Hey, look, I'm more closer to that old time way than I am or ever in this new way, buddy. Them old timers knew what they was doing. Them old timers loved God. Them old, hey, you get, you get somebody, I, I'm sorry to say this, sound like I'm condemning this generation. I'm just telling the truth. Most of the time you get somebody over 50 that's saved and you don't have to beg them to be in the house of God. You don't have to plead them to love God. Older people know what they've seen a move of God and they support the church. They'll support what's going on. This younger crowd, you got to beg them and bribe them to get them in the house of God. Not all of them, but some of them. God. Wants you and I to do a work. He's privileged us, given us a great privilege to be a part of Heritage Baptist Church. And all I'm saying is this. It's a bundle of children dying without Christ. I know there's a lot of important things going on, but you know what? This entire community around here, they so many houses. You know what? Nobody, I was walking yesterday. Somebody said, I saw you, preacher. You wasn't walking. You were struggling up that hill. I was walking. And I ran into people. They were kind to me. I run into a foreign man. I didn't even realize it. I was so focused on going to his door. And I walked right by him. His garage door was open. And he was standing there. He was a foreigner. I thought he was going to get mad at me. But he was so kind to me, Brother Greg. Nobody cussed me out. Nobody called the law on me. Nobody got mad at me. Nobody did. Matter of fact, everybody I talked to was very kind, all those that we saw. And here's what God's saying. This church right here, we were planted here not to sing good songs, not to have big fellowships. Those things are okay. We were planted here to provide spiritual opportunities for these lost people. Now here's the closing thought and I'm finished. There's a two-fold judgment here. We've all heard this before that these people that have had the opportunities, they've had the Peters and the Bartholomews and Thaddeus and Matthews, they've seen, they've had that kind of testimony that God said he's going to judge them and those people who have had those kind of men preaching, it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what the Bible says. In other words, the judgment from God is going to swing heavy in a community where the word of God's been rich and planted richly. That's what he's saying, right? Well, let's flip that coin. He's talking about the Bema seat this morning. That's for Christians. This is just a thought. Wonder what it's going to be to churches who've not provided spiritual opportunities. Let me be clear to this, especially those on Facebook. We got folks that's told me they're going to be visiting. This is not a social club. We, we don't have a social club here. Now we, we believe in fellowship. It's good. We have a third Sunday night fellowship, and these people cook good. Praise God. Those things are wonderful. This is a place to come and hear the word of God and grow and mature 
and try to reach the lost before our time runs out. James says time is like a vapor. It's here and gone. Before you know it, friend, if, God, if God's grace allows you, you'll be 80, 90 years old, or you may even be gone. What you going to do, you need to do now. We need to do it now. We need to do it now. Time is running out. We're downhill. We're losing ground every day. And let me remind you of something, friend. Matthew chapter 24 ties in with this passage. When you least expect it, a thief doesn't enter, a, a thief doesn't announce his presence when he comes into a home. He comes when somebody least expects it. The hour cometh when you know not the Son of Man cometh. I'm telling you in closing. There's coming a day the soul of the Son of God will touch the third heaven. He'll say, come up hither, Revelation 5. He'll say, come up hither. God's going to rapture the church. And I, I, it'd be all right with me. I'm along with John. Even so come Lord Jesus. I'd love for him to come now. But let me ask you this. Right now, just let me ask you this and we're going to close. If Jesus raptured this church right now, that's us, the universal body of Christ. Some people don't understand what that means. That means this. Let me clarify it. You don't have to just go to the Baptist church to be saved. Show me that and I'll eat the page. There are precious people who have accepted through repentance and faith the finished work of Calvary in other denominations. In the Pentecostal, in the Church of God, uh, I'll even say there may be Roman Catholics. These people have really turned in repentance and accepted Christ. They're as saved as you and I. Now, I'm not going to back off and tell you they're not in error. But when God calls all these people home, God calls us home right now. Here's my question, and I'd like for you to stand, if you would. She's going to come on to the piano, and we're going to close. What have we done? What are we doing and let me say this, if there's some of you that cannot physically stand, I totally understand that. If you, if, if you, because I, I, I totally understand that. So if, if you need to see it, that's okay. But as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I would like to ask you a question. You remember when Jesus saved you? You remember when he passed by and saved you? He shed his blood for you. He died for you. He rose again. Glory to God. I love him, don't you? God wants to do that for other people. God wants to do it for this community. It's special to Him. And you know what? Somebody said, Preacher, what could be better than going to heaven? Nothing. But you know the only thing that I believe will get close to you and I going to heaven is taking somebody with you. Can you imagine getting to heaven and uh, you might, somebody right here might, might only been able to give $10 toward the bus. And, and we get that bus and then little children get saved and God saw that you sacrificially give to that van or God saw that you, you folded envelopes and you passed out. God saw that. Hey, friend, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. We're losing the battle. We need children. We need families. We need young people. And we're losing it. And maybe today you said, Preacher, while well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you may not even feel like coming to the altar. You may not be able to. But you're here while no one's looking around. And you say, out of a raised hand, would you pray that God would help me do what I'm supposed to do, Brother Chris, because I've lost a lot of time. God bless your hearts. I see your hands all over the building. Mine goes up with yours. I see your hands. I'd love for God to use me to save somebody. I'd love for God to use me and my family. to. We might see children get saved. We might see families get saved. I want to be used of God. I've wasted too much time. God bless your heart. I see your hand. Time's past. Maybe you're here. I'm not physically able to do much. But I tell you, I covet your prayers. 
Pray with us. Ask God to provide this van. Do that, please. Somebody said, Preacher, I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to give to I had somebody come up the other day, and they told me, they said, Brother Chris said, God's put on our heart. We're going to give this much. And I was amazed. I was amazed. I was, I, I was, I, I, I tell you, I had to turn around and tell God I'm sorry. You ain't going to out give God, brother. You don't outdo God. We got people right now that are ready to drive a van and ready. They've already stepped up to the plate and said, Preacher, we've run one before. We know what we're doing. We'll do it. They're, they're even going to park it at their house and make sure they're, they're ready to serve God. We need, to, we, need, we need to do our part and get that van soon. We got 110 homes that's got a flyer on it that says we're, we're providing a bus route. And I'm asking God to help me do my part. Let me ask you a question while no one's looking around as a preacher here. Are you willing to do your part in this, in this matter? Are you here and you say, hey, be careful, don't raise your hand if you're not going to let God, you know, be, 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 be careful now. But you say, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. If God will speak to my heart financially and physically, I'm going to listen to God and I'm going to do what God wants me to do to where we can reach this community preacher. If that's you, slip your hand up. God bless your heart. I see your hands. I see them. It's been so good to be in the Lord's house. Don't forget tonight, uh, please be praying for these that are away from us. Remember Brother Marty today away from us. And uh, he'll be coming back on vacation. And remember him. And uh, So look, let me, let me clarify something. I'm bad with announcements. Y'all know that. Not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday. Every other Saturday we're going to do the visitation breakfast thing, okay? So you're going to have plenty of opportunities. Somebody said, preacher, you know, I can't come. I wouldn't be able to be here, but I can cook something at home and drop it off for the breakfast. You get with Miss Diane if you can help in any way. Let me remind you, everything you give on the way out, 100% of it goes here to the work of our church. And I trust you give according to the will of the Lord. It's been good to be in God's house. Be preaching tonight at 5 o'clock. Our service starts at 5. Our prayer is at 445. Be preaching through the life of David and looking forward to that. Brother Chuck Wilson, if you would. Dismiss us, please. Our Heavenly Father, and our God, we thank you for the service today. We thank you for visiting us. We thank you every family that's represented us here today. Father, we pray you be with us. Uh, if anyone here has never trusted you, we pray, Lord, to trust you as the Lord and Savior. We pray, Lord, to bless the offering. Use it for the fullness of the gospel. If these souls say in the right thing, bring us back this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.